Oh, it's time for yet another controversial topic here at Doberman Planet. I actually really enjoy these. These seem to be the most interesting today. It's all about the tail docking process for the Doberman. Why it's done, when it's done, how much it costs, and what the process is actually like. So uh, in case you didn't know, if you decide to get your Doberman's tail docked, also known as bobbed, uh, it means that your dog will come out looking a little something like this. And if you decide to leave your Doberman's tail all natural, it'll grow to a long, thin, pretty dense tail with a little bit of a curl to it, or it'll look something kind of like this. This is probably one of the earliest decisions you're going to have to make when it comes to your Doberman's care because this decision is usually made when the dog, actually before the dog's even born. And that's because the tail docking process usually happens when the dog's only a few days old. So when you decide if you want a dock tailed Doberman or not, make sure you communicate that with your breeder before the dog is even born because if you wait, it could easily be too late. Let's talk about some of the common reasons people often choose to get their Doberman's tails docked. Now, one of the big reasons is this right here, the Doberman Breed Standard. Now, this is basically uh, like a blueprint, if you will, for what a Doberman is supposed to be, what they're supposed to look like, and um, it is relied upon heavily by breeders while they're developing the breed so that they keep their dogs right in line with what a Doberman Pinscher is supposed to be. So if you get a Doberman Pinscher 20 years ago or you get a Doberman Pinscher now, it should in essence be the same dog. It's, this document is also relied upon heavily by AKC confirmation judges to determine which dogs are gonna be the champions of the breed. And this blueprint for the Doberman Pinscher says that the dog uh, is supposed to have a docked tail at approximately the second joint. And, you know, although it's not an automatic disqualifier in confirmation shows, um, it is a fault and it will make winning a breed confirmation show much more difficult if your dog is not docked. I don't believe there's ever been a AKC confirmation champion Doberman that I know of uh, that had a natural tail, but it could in theory happen. Now, do we care a lot about what this says about our dogs if we just want a family pet and we're not into showing our dogs? Uh, maybe not as much. Now, another common reason is for cosmetic reasons. Quite simply, a lot of people like the way it looks. And here in the United States, it's so incredibly common for a Doberman to have a dock tail that you almost never see a natural Doberman with that curly tail. Um, it's, and almost will never get recognized as a Doberman, especially if it's got the natural ears. So there is a little bit of a social pressure too. If you have a Doberman, you're kind of expected to have the tail docked, at least here in the United States. In fact, when I did my video a while back all about ear cropping Dobermans, there are a lot of people who commented, such as these people here on your screen, that they were just blown away that the Doberman didn't come naturally with that er those erect upright ears. That's how common that is here in the United States. And tail docking is even more common than ear cropping. So that just shows you how common it is. Um, a lot of people maybe even watching this video right now are probably blown away that the Doberman does not naturally come with that short dock tail. Another reason is if the dog is a working dog. Many Dobermans are bred and used for a specific working purpose, and uh, such as if they're a search and rescue dog, maybe they're flying through tight places uh, very quickly, or maybe they're out doing some work out in a brush and going through very tight, dense brush from time to time. And if that's the case, a lot of times these working dogs will have their tail docked to prevent injury from that type of work. This is especially true in Europe where a lot of times there's exceptions in the laws out there uh, in tail docking for working dogs specifically. Another very common reason is if the dog is gonna work in protection. And actually, this is one of the reasons that Carl Frederick Lewis Doberman, the creator of this breed, originally had his dog's tails docked. And um, it's simply to provide for one less handhold for an attacker to grab a hold of the dog and control the dog with. So if the dog's gonna be doing protection work, tail might be docked. Also, uh, it helps identify the dog quicker as a Doberman, especially in the, here in the US, like I said earlier. So, you know, if the dog can be quickly identified as a Doberman, a lot of times people know it's not a dog they wanna mess with and it prevents a lot of problems before they even start. Now, last major reason why is simply to avoid future pain for the dog, because if the dog gets his tail docked when they're only a couple days old, it's a very simple, quick procedure, takes a couple minutes and the dog is fine. Now, if it's done when the dog's older because their tail got broken or because there's a serious injury and a vet tells you that's necessary to dock an adult dog's tail, for example, it's now considered an amputation where it's a lot more serious of a procedure. So when it's only a few days old, it's a docking or a bobbing, but it becomes a lot more serious as an adult and is now official 
officially an amputation, um, and that can cause a lot more discomfort. Even a family Doberman with that thin, dense tail whipping around real fast, playing and wrestling, can get a broken tail uh, from time to time, which would necessitate uh, an amputation. And um, that is what a lot of people try to avoid by getting the dogs cropped. Now, keep in mind, these dogs are not the product of natural evolution. Um, over generations, these dogs were created by humans. And um, sometimes they have weak points. And a lot of people argue that that tail is one of those weak points that can easily break and cause pain for the dog. Now, while these are a lot of the common reasons people are choosing to get their Doberman's tails docked or bobbed, uh, there is a lot more to this, and I do have a video coming out about all the pros and the cons, because there are some drawbacks, too, for sure, about getting your Doberman's tail docked. So if you need help deciding if it's right for you, you should definitely check out that video. In that video, I debate myself on both sides of that issue. And once that video is ready, it'll be linked to in the description down below, so you can check it out. Now, is it legal to get your Doberman's tail docked? Well, that depends heavily on where you live. Here in the United States and Mexico, uh, it is legal. Some places in Canada, it's legal as well, but that's not the case everywhere. Um, so make sure that you check your local laws before you decide. Here is actually a map from Wikipedia that may show uh, where it is legal and where it's not legal. I say may show because uh, I have noticed some inconsistencies with this map. For example, this map shows that it's legal in all of Canada. Canada, and I know it. while it is legal on the federal level, there are some provinces uh, where it is illegal. So even if this map says you're okay, make sure you do some research and check your local laws. But as you can see from the map, there's still many areas where it is definitely illegal or it may be mostly banned, but uh, there may be still exceptions even in those areas where it's banned uh, in the law for certain specific reasons, such as if the dog is a working dog uh, or if there's a medical reason for the docking. So what's this procedure actually like? Well, like I said before, it's done when the dog's usually only a couple days old, and it's one of two methods that are usually used. Uh, the first method is called the banding method, um, which is where something called a ligature, which is basically a small rubber band or even a real tight O-ring, is wrapped around the dog's tail um, to cut off circulation uh, of the tail. And then in a few days, the tail simply just falls off. That's one common method. Another method is simply the surgical method, a little bit more classic method, which is where the tail is clamped by a vet usually with a special tool. And then um, they either use a scalpel or surgical scissors to remove the tail. They'll either put a little dot or two of maybe some surgical glue on there to prevent bleeding, or they might even uh, throw a stitch or two on there to help prevent it from opening up. Uh, but that is how it's usually done. It's uh, typically a quick process if it's the surgical method and in you know a couple minutes it's over. Now, believe it or not, in the United States, it's legal to do this at home without sterile equipment and without anesthesia, which is of course, very controversial. And maybe there are breeders out there who do this at home themselves. I don't know, but I would never recommend that. I would definitely urge you guys, um, if you have puppies that you want to get docked, bring them to an experienced vet who knows what they're doing. There's a far smaller chance of complications. It's really inexpensive at most vets. We'll talk about that in a second. And it's just a whole lot safer. Now, a lot of professionals will tell you that when this is done soon after birth, the uh, Doberman's nerve endings haven't even grown into the tail yet, which is why they believe that the dog does not feel any pain. And actually, we'll talk more about the pain topic in my future video all about the pros and cons of this. Um, but it's really weird to see, guys. Um, you'll see a lot of times the vet will just take that clamp, clamp the tail for a few minutes, and then snip the tail off. You can look up videos on YouTube uh, seeing this done if you're curious at all. Um, it is really strange to see because we expect a much bigger reaction from the dog. Um, sometimes there is a small reaction, sometimes there's none. Um, but we expect to see a lot bigger one, and it's a little, you know, it's unsettling to see because uh, obviously an older dog would be a huge deal. Um, and, you know, that's probably why this is a controversial topic, and it's probably why this will remain a very controversial topic. Now, what age can this be done? Well, typically it's done between one to seven days old, and most professionals will tell you that the earlier the better when it comes to discomfort for the dog. Uh, if you go much later than that, or even worse as an adult dog, it's more equivalent to amputating a limb, and it comes with a lot more discomfort, and it's a lot more traumatic on the dog. If it is done later, anesthesia is usually used, um, stitches are used, uh, a lot of times it's an overnight stay at the vet, 
Uh, it's just a lot more traumatic, and at that point, it is officially an amputation and no longer just a docking or a simple bobbing. Now, how much does this cost? Well, we called a few different vets before making this video for you guys on different sides of the country uh, to get a good average price for you, and we were quoted between $20 to $40 per newborn pup, and that price almost always included a dew claw removal as well, which is another very common procedure uh, for newborn Doberman pups. And uh, that was something where they almost always said you could wait in the lobby and the dogs will be done in you know, 10, 20 minutes and you can take the dogs home right after. We also asked them about docking adult dogs and we were quoted between $500 to $900 for that procedure. And because uh, again, as we learned, it's a much more serious procedure involving anesthesia and some other things. Um, and those were a lot of times an overnight deal where you leave your dog overnight or you bring them in the morning and take them home in the evening because they want a lot longer observation period because it is such a uh, much more serious uh, procedure. Now, as I said, this is a very controversial subject, guys, so definitely be nice to each other in the comment section, and I will do a video soon on all the pros and the cons. There's actually a lot of reasons not to get a tail docked, uh, which is very interesting as well, and I'll go over those soon in my upcoming video. When that video is ready, of course, it'll be linked to in the description. Now, if you're like me and you absolutely love learning about this fascinating, incredibly unique breed of dog that is the Doberman, definitely hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon that pops up next to it. Uh, if you don't hit that bell icon, YouTube just makes it way too easy to miss future videos when they're released and you'll never even know about it. So make sure that bell icon is ticked. And uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment down below before you go anywhere and keep being great Doberman breed ambassadors. And of course, see you next time.